this way. So uh, our next session is all about digital plans. So many of you will know that there has been a project underway all of this year, started last year actually, to help us get digital plans underway. So there is a steering committee that's made up of uh, ORG, Spatial Services, Office of Surveyor General and LRS. Uh, Adrian White is the project manager out of Spatial Services uh, who is looking after this project. Uh, they have done an independent review, which most of you I'm sure have read cover to cover by now. Um, and you will have received an email this week from LRS asking you to take part in a survey. Now you might have looked at that survey and thought, what on earth is this about? What exactly are they asking me? Well, I'm glad you asked because we've got the answers for you right here. So Adrian's gonna give us an overview of the whole project and then they're gonna take us through the case studies that they're asking you about in the survey. And the goal of this is that at the end of the webinar, you're all going to go on and you're going to do the survey because we really need your input. Otherwise, things could go towards only those who do actually answer the survey. So very important that you have your say. So without further ado, over to you, Adrian. Thank you. And I'll share my screen now. Uh, and I'm working on an ancient apple. So because um, apparently there's a new... Uh, policy at, at my work where we don't uh, let you connect to Zoom. So uh, uh, we'll see how this laptop goes. It means I've lost all my animations, but um, oh. I, I think hopefully we'll get the same effect. We can uh, see the screen though, that's what matters. Yes, and what I wanna make sure is that it's not jumping ahead, um, but everyone can see that? Yep, all good. Excellent. And just, just a little tip for those who sort of saying, but I can just see all your faces in front. You can actually minimise the thumbnail video so that you can actually see all the slides. Little tip there for you. I'll take that on right now. Uh, thanks, Michelle. And um, really appreciate uh, ACS giving us the opportunity to uh, present an update on digital survey plans to everyone today. And, and obviously everyone who's, who's uh, tuned in on your Friday afternoon. Um, so uh, if I'm between uh, you and drinks, hopefully we'll make the most of your time. Uh, I'm going to provide a bit of an update, um, as uh, Michelle said, on the uh, project in general. And um, I'll also go through a bit of a summary of uh, the independent review that, that we got Grosvenor to undertake. Um, now, it is a long report, and uh, so hopefully today I'll distill what we heard from industry. And that was really one of the primary objectives of the review, to make sure that we've heard industry's concerns with the current approach. And we understand uh, uh, how we should undertake um, the next phases of, uh, I suppose, undertaking a strategic reset of the way in which we are transitioning to digital plans. Um, we've also uh, very fortunate to have uh, Daniel Griffin online as well from New South Wales Land Registry Services, and he is going to take you through some of the next steps uh, that we're undertaking for digital plans to uh, co-design with industry a preferred approach uh, to uh, uh, digital plans. And, and also lead up to uh, a, a, a design or, or a solution that we can then go and implement. Um, but the key thing is we're doing it with industry and we're making sure we've, we've taken all of those concerns and feedback that we've received on board. Um, but before I get into the review, I, I just wanna to touch on a few uh, uh, different things. And um, the first of those is uh, comparing, uh, slides, comparing the uh, transition of uh, uh, survey plans from uh, paper to digital plans with another uh, important transition that's occurred in the land titling system uh, in, in terms of e-conveyancing. And some of you I'm sure have seen this, this graph before and it's, we're continuing to update it as um, e-conveyancing continues to uh, almost get to 100%. There are still a few um, exceptions uh, where, where electronic conveyancing can't be used, but you can see it's gradually getting closer and closer to um, uh, being completely uh, uh, electronic in terms of uh, those mainstream dealings. Um, and, you know, essentially both of these reforms, if you look back, say around 2016, were at a similar point in, in their uptake. Um, and there are two important time uh, frames or, or points in time that, that this slide show. The first is the point where e-conveyancing timeframes were announced. So this is the point where they said, right, we're gonna uh, 
um, essentially require uh, all the mainstream documents to be lodged in a digital form. And the important thing about that announcement was that industry was on board at the time. The industry associations supported those timeframes being announced. And of course, there were parts of the industry that were concerned, that, that were worried about the change. But as uh, I suppose a whole, the industry associations felt that it was good for the industry and that uh, uh, they supported that transition. Now, uh, that was in late 2016 and in mid last year, those timeframes came into effect and they, they didn't all come into effect at the same time. They're actually a staged implementation. So there are a number of different dates, um, but the, I suppose the, the biggest one was in mid 2019. And you can see the impact uh, from when those timeframes were announced to uh, when uh, that, that uptake really um, picked up, sort of a linear like um, uh, shift from that, that low uh, around about 10% uptake uh, all the way up into the 90s. And uh, certainly if we can learn a lot from this in terms of uh, what, what we may do, need to do with digital plans, um, but obviously that, that core element of, of industry support and industry involvement the whole way through. Another aspect uh, in terms of uh, e-conveyancing, and, and of course this isn't going to be a one-for-one -one with digital plans. There are lots of differences between the reforms. Uh, however, one of the key things that, that was clear with uh, digital, uh, with e-conveyancing, was there were significant benefits that were delivered back to industry. And I'm sure many of you will agree that this has not been the case or has not been uh, the case to the expectations that you'd ha uh, you may have had. Uh, for digital plans. So for instance, with the conveyancing, there were 75% time savings per transaction, um, uh, improvements in quality, uh, no longer needing to physically attend settlement. Uh, you didn't have to spend time on hold contacting other parties, um, faster and more certain settlement, and the, the funds are available sooner. So um, there were some pretty big uh, success stories out of the reform. Um, and as I, I alluded to on the previous slide, uh, that industry involvement through a reform committee was a core aspect of uh, the, um, uh, the success of it, but also that the industry was driving the reform uh, from within. So if you're a conveyancer and you wanted to undertake an electronic transaction, um, you needed the other parties to also uh, be, be working in that electronic workspace. And so therefore you had this peer pressure to get on board. And I, I don't um, know that we can uh, uh, mirror that uh, exactly in the same way for surveying, but we certainly want that sense of, of um, urgency and, and appetite for, for transitioning within the industry. And so making sure that industry have a strong buy-in in, in terms of the way we're going forward is going to be really important. Um, so I guess um, it's just a couple of slides now on what do we actually want digital plans to achieve? because it's not necessarily something that you just want to do for the sake of it. Um, you really want to look at the way that plans operate now, um, the things that aren't performing in the way that we would like them to. And so by undertaking a transition to a digital process, um, how is it actually going to resolve those issues? So the first one is, is a bit of an example around quality. And you've heard from David um, in terms of the, uh, some of the issues in, in plans with the amendments process and missing dimensions and those sorts of things. Um, how can those be resolved and, and how can they be improved through digital? So here, and uh, usually I, I drop in some of these uh, graphics um, uh, through the animations, but unfortunately not, it's not working today. But we have uh, um, a process where surveyors prepare their plans, they get lodged with land registry services to examine the plans. Um, now about 70 or 80% of those uh, uh, were getting requisitioned at the time. So this was, this was a trial that we did in 2018. Um, but more concerningly about, um, in terms of the requisitions, was the number of requisition cycles. So this is essentially you um, get a set of requisitions back on your plan, you update the plan, send it back in, and you get requisitioned again. And the average was 2.5. So that's between two and three letters uh, uh, per plan, which was uh, quite concerning. Um, now, once the, the plan does meet LRS's requirements, it will get registered. And then it would, as, as David showed in his slides, uh, go through to spatial services to update the DCDP. Now, we are now operating at spatial services in a 
100 percent um, uh, I suppose survey uh, observations process um, we always enter the survey observations off the plans in order to update the DCDB and so you can imagine that's why we are picking up those errors that slip through uh, where uh, things have been left off the plan or, or uh, the plans in error in terms of its um, geometric closes and so forth and those things haven't been picked up in the examination process now at the time, it was about 2% of plans, which is still fairly significant. It's over 100 um, that we couldn't get into the DCDB. And so they then get fed back through the plan amendment process that David went through. Now, instead of undertaking the, um, the, the trial that, that this uh, slide actually is referring to is what we call in capture on demand. And so it was a collaboration between spatial services and land registry services to shift that data capture from after registration to plan lodgement. And uh, so this meant that essentially we had intelligent digital data uh, within 48 hours um, of lodgement um, that could then get used to supplement the plan examination process and uh, identify errors before the plans are registered. And really what this slide is intending to show is that everyone wins. Um, we had the requisition cycles uh, dropping by more than half, um, which means that obviously less rework for surveyors, less rework for the examiners. But we also almost completely eliminated those major errors. And these are the things that, you know, you end up with blues and, and trying to get those consents again uh, that David went through. Um, there was only one plan uh, in this whole trial uh, that, that did get picked up after registration. And, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, we, we could feed back into the process to, to ensure that uh, we continually improve it. But it was uh, certainly a significant reduction in um, uh, the, the errors being found in registered plans. Um, we have now uh, implemented this trial on an ongoing basis. So late last year we commenced again. And um, uh, for those of you who would have seen the, uh, the latest um, uh, update that's come out for digital plans, it's actually in the ACS New South Wales, oh, sorry, the, I think it's the National Magazine, the surveyor, um, that, that's just come out and, and I'm sure will be in your mailboxes uh, uh, next week. Um, uh, and uh, we're, we're getting up to 40 plans per week now going through a similar process to this. We're calling it hybrid capture on demand because it's a bit of a mix of um, manual examination and using digital plans, um, but certainly allows a lot of these errors to get picked up. Um, I suppose the other, the other aspect that we'd like to achieve with digital plans is improving some of the timeframes. And, and this, uh, this slide sort of goes through the type of costs um, that a developer is likely uh, to experience throughout the development process. And um, these, these figures aren't exact. They're based, they are based on a real uh, Greenfield subdivision. However, uh, um, it, it is some years ago now, so I imagine it, that the figures would be fairly conservative to, uh, compared to a comparable development uh, that, that went on today. Um, so what we have here is, uh, you know, when the land's acquired, uh, obviously there's a, there's a purchase cost there and you've got your holding cost per day if you say you've got a loan uh, uh, over that particular land or mortgage. Um, you've then got uh, the land development, so you've got your development approval, um, you're undertaking all your construction and so forth. Um, those costs are increasing. Um, you then finish construction, you get to where you want your certification and all your consents. Um, and really there, all the way through to settlement is where you're at your maximum exposure um, in terms of financial risk um, uh, for the project. And obviously, you know, you, you're quite committed at that point. You've just, um, you know, any delays that you're experiencing gathering those, those consents, um, you almost have to grin and bear it, but um, you know, some analysis that we did over about five years of data showed that typically that that from the end of construction through to settlement could be anywhere around five months for greenfield and about three months for strata and so there's certainly a significant opportunity to improve time frames and that's one of the uh, most important aspects of, of what we're doing with uh, the digital plans reform to see if there's things that we can do to uh, fast track that uh, post-construction uh, uh, process um, to essentially uh, get get home buyers into, into their properties sooner, uh, but also particularly in the current current environment, um, really free up that capital that's that's tied into these projects, um, so that that can be reinvested to further stimulate the economy. 
So um, on to the review now, and um, I, I obviously conscious of time, I, I um, will try and get through this reasonably quickly. Um, we engaged Grosvenor Performance Group to undertake a review and explore and explain why uptake had remained low, identify opportunities um, that exist for the digitalization of plans. And um, that word digitalization is really to, to just um, really point out, we're not just talking about a scan document here, we're talking about intelligent digital data. Um, we also asked them to provide the government and LRS with recommendations on the best way to progress digital plans, such that benefits to surveyors, government and other plan users are maximised. Um, and the way they kicked off the report, and, and for those of you that have had a chance to have a read, I, I hope that it's um, telling the, uh, the right story for you, but um, this is a quote from our colleagues down in Victoria from some time ago, but quite pertinent, I think. Uh, Land surveying is not an exact science. Establishing title boundaries or re-establishing them is as, at least as much about the law, its interpretation and the gathering of evidence as it is about measurement and position fixing. And I think what they're really getting at there is that our approach to digital has to recognise that. It can't just be about um, coming up with uh, enough data so that we can update the DCDB. It's got to be uh, recognise the, the breadth of what surveyors do and um, uh, maximise the benefit from uh, utilising digital data in that way. Now, there's a lot of people involved in a survey plan from its creation through to, I suppose, what it finally delivers, which is which is uh, new titles for new properties. Um, so, uh, as part of the review, Grosvenor had to speak to all these different stakeholders, and um, and so it was, it was quite a significant undertaking. Um, so. That included a, a variety of, of industry groups, um, uh, government agencies. They also spoke to interstate and international jurisdictions, and we're continuing to uh, look to and, and reach out to other international jurisdictions that can provide us with some guidance on, on what approach we can take. We also have a consolidated committee. So uh, similarly to the e-conveyancing reform, uh, we've got lots of different uh, industry groups and organisations involved in that, as you can see at the bottom there. Uh, from an ACS perspective, Michelle and uh, Craig Turner uh, provide really great representation there and are very vocal and, um, and supportive of what we're doing, so really appreciate that. Um, here are all the uh, survey firms that, that Grobner spoke to uh, as part of the, the review, so I'm sure some of you would be online now, and I really appreciate the, the time that you provided to uh, uh, to, to support the review and to make sure that we got the best outcomes possible. Um, now, how did we come up with this list? Uh, it was uh, with input from uh, obviously the uh, surveyors within spatial services, within OIG and LRS, but we also went out to those uh, representatives of ACS and the institution of surveyors to make sure we had a good mix of smaller firms, larger firms. We've obviously got lots of different geographic locations represented here. Um, we also wanted representation from groups that had and hadn't used Land XML, and even some that tried it and then uh, stopped because it wasn't meeting their needs. So we really tried to make sure we got a really good diverse range of input as part of the review. And here's what the surveyors told them. Uh, surveyors have a desire to please their clients. It's not surprising. You want to provide value to your clients um, as part of doing good business. Um, and to do that, they wanted to produce a high quality survey at a competitive cost, which gets registered quickly without contestation now or in the future. Um, there was also a significant passion and pride in the profession and that professional integrity for establishing accurate boundaries, minimising disputes and maintaining respect within a tight knit industry. And here's a, here's a quote from a regional surveyor that surveyors see the next surveyor as the end user of their plans. In terms of attitude towards digitalisation, uh, one Sydney surveyor said, if surveyors keep producing paper plans, we're going to be left behind as a profession. We need to get better at sharing data. There was some concerns about the current approach and that the main benefits are for government. We are just data collectors for them. If someone in government wants it, then fine, but why put the cost back onto our clients? And also leading to that, um, uh, that quote that I mentioned before at the start of the report, this perception that the current approach favours data over decisions. Monuments must rule and measurements need to allow for variation. Now, uh, 
the, the whole concept and, and concern about, you know, ah, is land XML taking us towards a coordinated cadaster came up lots of times, in fact. And I just wanted to make it absolutely clear. Um, the Surveyor General, the Registrar General, David, um, uh, you know, they'll tell you straight up, this is not, we are not moving to a coordinated cadaster. Um, that is not part of this reform um, and it is not our intention. And hopefully uh, when you see some of the, um, uh, the survey and the case studies that LRS are going to go through shortly, you'll see that that's certainly not the focus of what we're trying to do. In terms of the issues with land XML, um, the, the input that they got from surveyors uh, so that it took about 30% longer to produce land XML than just doing the plan image. Um, and, you know, obviously the, the quote from the Sydney surveyor there is time consuming, including all the things in land XML required for verification by LRS. Comments about the rendering. The rendering is hopeless, just pages and pages of tables. And also software and training. So uh, a regional surveyor there said, haven't seen a package which ingests land XML and uses the reduced observations, not the coordinates to make the TIF. But when LRS check the closure of the lots, they use the reduced observation. So are we looking at the data the same way? Some concerns there. Um, also concern in terms of the training to get land XML set up was significant. Surveyors did raise a number of benefits for, from land XML. So um, they certainly saw benefits in accessing land XML data and um, uh, you'll certainly uh, hear more about that uh, in the coming weeks. We're really excited about um, uh, the prospect of making that available and easily available to industry. Um, LAN XML um, also was found to work well for QA. So one regional surveyor said, I pick up problems, missed lines or wrong connections. And, and apparently they, they even use it for plans when they don't lodge the LAN XML. So it's just their checking mechanism. There was uh, some skepticism though. Um, electronic plans have the opportunities to have a lot of mistakes and they might even increase but I don't think we'll significantly improve the accuracy and some of this concern was around potential differences between the plan image and the data and how to make sure uh, that didn't occur. Grosvenor asked what would incentivize the use of LAN XML so you wouldn't be surprised to see faster turnaround time, reduced requisitions, so quality, the same sort of themes that, that have been uh, throughout uh, David's talk, but also um, earlier in this one. And, and that, that uh, issue again around only having to create one plan, um, just pick one, <laughs> essentially, uh, was, was what this regional surveyor said. Um, other suggestions included the uh, reduction in fees, free training or software, simplifying the data requirements and encouraging other authorities to use that data uh, too. So you can get a bit more bang for your buck if you make the effort in uh, preparing that data. Now they did ask about mandating as well. And um, I have to admit, I, I was surprised that um, in the workshops and in the uh, uh, phone consultations with the regional firms, um, the surveyor said, look, you know, as an industry, um, we, we do, smart things, we use data all the time. And you know, if, if we had to do it, we would, and it would probably take about 20, 12 to 24 months, but there were some conditions. They needed improved software, sufficient time for the transition and, and really clarification on that legal source of truth. Um, and there was some concerns about uh, small firms and in particular small regional firms being disadvantaged. Uh, one regional surveyor said, the expectation to learn land XML is not feasible only doing one plan a year, and uh, it'd take two weeks to come up with something to satisfy the requirements. I haven't got time to learn. Uh, they also asked what needs to be on a plan, and there were comments around some of the information being unnecessary. So we're just shuffling around government data from one entity to another, and um, obviously comments about addresses, which I'm sure wouldn't be surprising, although the concern here was not getting them, but. Um, uh, the time it takes to, uh, for council to respond. Um, there are also some suggestions about the opportunity to have a plan for surveyors and a simplified view of that information for everyone else. Um, I know uh, in years gone by, there've been, uh, if you like, title diagrams in New South Wales, and, and certainly that's the case in, in other jurisdictions as well. And is that something that 
uh, we want to consider again uh, uh, for New South Wales. So what needs to be included on a digital plan? Well, all of the surveyors said it must have boundaries, lot numbers and easements. Um, most of the surveyors said, well, it should also have reference marks, occupations and structures, skims marks and adjoining information so that you have some context about where it is. So we need to perhaps reimagine what, what plans look like. And as I mentioned, perhaps that could be even tailored to the particular user that's looking at the information. Surveyors also had some suggestions on alternative formats, um, such as CAD data, raw data out of the calc packages you use, smart PDFs, or even some proprietary formats. And, and one of them mentioned was CXML, which is used in the Northern Territory. Uh, one regional surveyor went, um, elaborated a bit further and said the best way would be a simplified DWG or DXF that just contains the boundaries and easements. It would only be an extra hour to create, so you can still lodge the TIF image and accompany it with a DWG or DXF, and it would be a one-for-one -one with the plan and readable. A title search would then be connected to that and print an A4 diagram of the lot for attaching to the title documents, and they wouldn't have to look at the whole DP with 30 or 40 lots. The typical landowner doesn't want to see that. So how can we make, I suppose, the, the services that are delivered from plans um, uh, fit for purpose and, and uh, more uh, easy to understand for, for users? The biggest opportunity for efficiency raised was approvals. And um, I've touched on that a little bit earlier in the presentation, um, but the comment from a regional survey that it's all been done in a straight line, bouncing back and down the chain it needs to be done in parallel. Um, and another regional today is saying it can take four to six weeks for the mortgagee to sign and another four to six weeks for council, and they can't have it together at the same time. Um, now we know that uh, in practice, um, the, the, there are uh, surveyors in, uh, in industry that uh, have probably been um, sending an admin sheet uh, to one and, and bringing them back together. Um, we've been working closely with OIG uh, and the introduction of electronic signatures and we're really looking to take advantage of some of the changes that have been made to enable that um, to, to progress this area as quickly as possible. So, so do stay tuned. Um, there was also a suggestion about bringing in plans early and, and one of them was around pre-examination, um, uh, but, but there are others uh, in a variety of forms about getting that information in earlier and making it available um, uh, to, to other surveyors, but also perhaps securely sharing that um, uh, with, with all the consenting parties from a common source. Um, there are also other opportunities raised around strata plans and that strata plans were perhaps an easier thing to bite off than um, DPs. Um, there were suggestions around notifications of nearby PPNs, improved search tools, and even perhaps asking for enhanced boundary evidence such as photos. So, when you pick up the corner of a wall, um, was a brick at the time. And uh, if someone else comes along in the future and there's a render on it, uh, well, that'll be immediately obvious uh, if they need to account for that. There were some mixed views on plan examination and requisitions. So um, one regional surveyor said LRS used to be very much orientated to, uh, oriented to checking the position of the boundaries and the trail of title, any encumbrances, et cetera. But now we have a tick box mentality where we're getting requisitions on every plan. Another regional surveyor had a different view and they said LRS is getting better now. There will be a phone call with a minor error saying fix this up and send it back and we won't requisition you. Um, a third regional surveyor said you can either change the plan and get it accepted quickly or dig your heels in and stick to what is right. And so there's obviously a, a, a bit of um, uh, uh, varying views uh, across industry on, on this, uh, I suppose, process of uh, putting forward your opinion on the boundary definition and uh, the, the process by which any um, different views get resolved. Other findings were, um, a regional surveyor said, I honestly expected that when LRS was privatised, they would come up with a different stream for land XML, which would be faster and cheaper but they don't seem that interested and we're doing their work for them. And uh, hopefully you'll, uh, after listening to Daniel's presentation after this, um, you'll see that we are taking a very active view and, and LRSN, the New South Wales government are working very closely to make sure that uh, 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 we are doing this 
in a much more consultative way and uh, with industry's views um, front of mind. Um, there was also some frustration with the lack of coordination. Um, so one survey mentioned the sharing the spa uh, spatial cadaster with more individual councils would be good. Um, the more people that are contributing to it and have access to it, the better. So we had, um, uh, I suppose, as an output for, for how we need to take this forward, a roadmap that Grosvenor provided. Firstly, confirming the outcomes, agreeing on some governance arrangements. Um, and I've mentioned some of those before, and, and uh, Michelle mentioned the steering committee and the, the consultative committee before as well. Um, designing solutions. So, so we're now entering the co-design phase, which we would want to do in close consultation with industry. And finally, implementation. In terms of the outcomes for surveyors, Grosvenor uh, sort of synthesised all the information that they got back from industry and, and um, summarised that as an objective to ensure client satisfaction and professional integrity, success factors, speeding up the creation accuracy of plans and the completeness of information. Um, enablers, they found it to be more efficient pre-calculations, less time spent drafting, minimised duplication of effort, automated validation, pre-lodgement. And in terms of outcomes, fewer requisitions and lower risk of professional indemnity claims, and really making sure that across the industry, the bar is set high to make sure that uh, the boundary determination evidence surveyors use is absolutely clear. So we have those governance uh, arrangements in place that I mentioned, and the surveying representatives on that group are, are below, and they've, they're very actively involved. Now, you will see that there's quite a long list of, of others involved as well, and that's because so many different groups are involved uh, in, in the, the process. Um, this is, you know, essentially the end-to-end the -end subdivision process. There's many different uh, players there, um, but surveyors are obviously central. And that's why it's so important that we make sure that we fully understand uh, the views of the profession and we continue to uh, involve the profession the entire way through the process. We do have a, a dedicated mailbox uh, for the project, so feel free to... Uh, reach out if you uh, have any questions or you have any further feedback or you think we missed something as part of the review, uh, do, do let me know. Um, but that's the end of, of my talk. And um, it's at this point that I'll, I'll hand over to uh, Daniel at Land Registry Services, who's gonna take you through the industry survey that you would have all received um, and the associated case studies. Um, one thing I do wanna point out in particular about that survey is that this is not a voting exercise. We're not picking a winner. What we're doing is really trying to gauge um, how different approaches that are comparable to things that have done in other jurisdictions uh, um, sit both with you in the way that you think about surveying and boundary definition, how they would fit with your business, how your business operates, the technology that you use, but also how you'd like to see the profession move forward and continue to have those strong principles in, in the work that you do um, uh, for the foreseeable future and also how it's perceived by others. So um, really do take that, that broad view when you're, you're looking at this survey to make sure you're thinking, well, well what, what is gonna be the best for our future collectively? And also what's the impact on me going to be so that we can make sure that it's one, we're doing the right thing, we're heading in the right direction. It's realistic, so it's achievable. Um, and uh, uh, you know, we've, we've got all of the relevant information on board to, to go forward. So, um, Daniel, are you, uh, are you online there? Are you ready to take he's, over? He's yeah. ready. So we'll, I'm ready. We'll, cut, we'll cut you and Daniel can share. And everybody, Daniel is wearing a tie. Like, that's a suit. This right? is I'm in pre you're first time in, in a few months now. Are you now. in the office? Uh, no, I'm in my bedroom. So oh, I decided to put a uh, screen impressive. behind. <laughs> even more impressive. I mean, the most I did today was put on some makeup for you all. Um, just while Daniel is getting that all set up, there weren't any specific questions that came through for you, Adrian, but somebody said good job. So good work there. I'd also thank just you. like to acknowledge that the Surveyor General is on the call. So um, thank you, Narelle, for joining us today. So, you know, I'm just putting that out there. So if you've got any specific questions, I'm sure Narelle would love to jump in and answer them. And David Job has come back in. So again, if you've got ORG questions, you can ask him as well. So over to you, Daniel. Thank you, Michelle, and thanks for inviting us today. Um, just wanted to say good afternoon to all of you, and I know some of you may not know me, so 
My name is Daniel Griffin and I'm the Digital Plan Examination Team Leader here at New South Wales Land Registry Services. And today I'll be discussing digital survey plans and what our next steps are following that independent review that Adrian has talked about that was released earlier this year. So just a quick agenda today, I'll do a quick recap of what is Digital Survey Plans Project, some of our current work in the digital plan space, what co-design means for digital plans, and our um, upcoming stakeholder engagement plan and some of the digital plan case studies that, as Adrian mentioned, we hope are kind of thought-provoking concepts which lead to collaboratively design new solutions together with you. So digital survey plans in a nutshell is about making the following streams smarter and faster for everyone involved. So the review captured industry perception that surveyors did not benefit sufficiently from land XML and that it was mainly LRS and government who benefited, not the profession. So taking this feedback on board, what we need to achieve now is DPs, SPs, consents and all associated documents that can be created and registered to save you time and money, not add time to your processes. They must also achieve the other benefits such as reduced errors, requisitions, and ensure more consistent and efficient LRS plan examination. So some of our current work. So whilst undertaking this review, we've been generating digital areas we could focus on that weren't dependent on the completion of the review. As mentioned, we have released a survey to the industry to gather your ideas and test the case studies that I'll present shortly. We truly want as much contribution from the industry as possible, so please take the time, if you do have the time, to get your thoughts captured. We've also enhanced our digital plan validation service, so it now runs almost 30 mathematical and regulation checks. Registered XMLs can now be ordered for free upon purchase of a TIFF image through your normal information broker. And this can be a huge time saver during your pre-field work. As Adrian mentioned before, we've started up the hybrid capture on demand, and that's, so that's running at the moment, where plans are being captured in XML at examination to ensure for misclose and other errors are picked up prior to registration. So this month, we've also created new and updated interactive admin sheets and an ADA-B instrument, which were released with the announcement of the interactive, uh, sorry, the interim electronic signature process. These now contain execution templates to assist your processes. And I'll just give you a quick demonstration of the DP admin sheet right now. So if you can see the admin sheet on my screen now, we've actually created a user guide for these and we put them inside the form. So if you just click on the button before, it'll bring up a few sheet document and it'll show you all the functions of the form and how you can accurately use them. It has a few of the features that are existing, all the plan purposes, and if you type in a lot in DP, that'll enter in all sheets. If you select A, B, or C in the survey certificate, then different parts of the form fill out or remove themselves. And we've actually allowed just spaces for electronic signatures. So if you read that the guide notes for plans, if you do use an electronic signature, you just have to have a little statement just so we know that's electronic signature. So I've added my name in here and I've actually created my own digital signature in Adobe with the fill and sign function. And if I was a registered surveyor, don't, don't chase me down for this Jobies because I'm not, but um, I would add my electronic signature in there. Um, so one of the main new features is those execution templates. And we're just hoping that that just helps you guys out a little bit. So you don't have to know exactly how things are meant to be worded and things like that. So if you Click on the RP Corporation or Power of Attorney on the last page of this document will spawn the template for that. So here is just the name of the registered prior provider and a space for the signature. And you can add and subtract as many as you need. And that is the same for companies. So you can just enter the company name there, there, and the signature space and the position and things like that. Um, and finally, it's the same for the power of attorney. And we've also added this to the strata plan, the community plan, and the section 88B instrument. So I encourage you to have a go and you know, provide as much feedback as you have with that. Okay, so now back to the survey plans. Uh, I've just, there's just a question that's come through, Daniel. Yep. 
do we need to use the interactive admin sheet for an electronic signature or can we add an electronic signature to the PDF of the non-interactive plan form? Yep, you can add it to any form that you like. We've just created this to kind of help um, with that process, but um, yeah, you can add it to the non-interactive forms as well. Um, okay, so I'll just move on now. So this project has been set up so that we can co-design potential solutions collaboratively with the industry. So it was recognised that one of the main mistakes from the previous Linux Mill project and something we must avoid is just forcing something upon industry. So we need to work together. So the review obtained a quote from an industry member which stated, it is recognised by most stakeholders that the initial attempt to introduce Linux Mill did not sufficiently consider the views of the surveying industry. We agree and for this reason we, we must co-design solutions to be effective and beneficial to all involved this time around. So an actual definition of co-design, so it's a design approach attempting to actively involve all stakeholders in the design process to help ensure the result meets their needs and is usable. This is one of the reasons we'll be continuing our stakeholder engagement over the next weeks and months to capture your ideas into the design process, process so that it meets the end result for your needs. Further engagement with the industry has begun with the release of the survey on Wednesday. We will look to gauge your capacity, interest and preferred methods for further engaging with us to co-design a revised approach and test a series of case study scenarios for alignment with your business processes. From there and beginning next week, targeting engagement made up of surveyors and firms representative of the industry will participate in virtual sessions to design a way forward for digital plans in New South Wales. Ultimately, endorsement from the consultative community will be sought for proceeding with a revised approach developed through these engagement activities. So now I'll go through some of the content from the survey. As an overview, we'd like to obtain your preferred method for engaging with us, some metrics on the firm you represent, and contact details if you wish to participate further. We then run through a few case studies which have come from what other jurisdictions have attempted to implement. It's important to note that at this stage, these are not foolproof solutions. As Adrian said, they're just case studies, which will hopefully gather your opinions. And with your engagement, we we'll, can look to make these into solutions that we can co-design together. So the first case study is concurrent consents. This was identified as the biggest opportunity for improved efficiency where a framework allowing for multiple consenting parties to execute the plan or associated document at the same time could be developed. Underpinning this framework is the coordination of access to and version control of the plan and associated documents. As such, surveyors would need to upload their plan and associated document prior to consents being gathered. The survey certificate for the plan could only be executed through ePlan. A PPN would then be generated as part of this process, if not already prepared and created, allowing the plan to be securely shared with all consenting parties so they can access the plan and documents. The admin sheet and ADAB if required would be completed through smart online forms. The smart forms would ideally be a type of web-based application where the users answer a short number of questions about the plan and the rest of the data is either pre-populated and that creates requisition-free forms. So this process will ensure parties are only alerted to changes where it impacts on their interests, allowing version control for specific components or clauses. Any consenting parties that typically provide endorsements through e-planning portal could access the plan. The process would extend the current subdivision certificate application module and would also incorporate gathering of notification of arrangements from utility service providers. Finally, the plan would become lodged when the lodging party, either through e-planning or another digital channel, provided evidence of consent from the remaining parties, such as the owners and the mortgagees. As with all of these case studies, there are strengths and weaknesses. So the strengths for this one include the opportunity to reduce the overall registration timeframe, leveraging the e-planning portal, which has had a strong uptake by councils already, improve visibility for the progression steps, and early access to surveyor certified plans. 
Weaknesses include the complexity in attempting to transition to this process, dependence on a variety of stakeholders altering their processes, and system integration. So now I'll move on to a few case studies for DPs. The next one is based upon a CAD file being lodged for registration. This is currently being investigated in South Australia, Victoria, and British Columbia. The structured CAD file approach requires surveyors to prepare plans in a similar way to current practices, but standardizes the drafting process using a defined set of layers and presentation styles. Block references are used to capture attribute information, shown as in the top left for the permanent mark, but is also a reference mark. There are also requirements for how the information is presented, allowing for the representation of plan information to scale in model space and diagrammatically using viewports and enlargements within a title block in paper space. Plan images are generated from the CAD file from one or more paper space sheets. Note that the viewport boxes shown in pink on the screen are set to non-printable, so would not appear on the final plan image. Strengths of this approach are that this format is one that firms are mostly comfortable with and similar specs are used across New South Wales currently. There would likely be less training required and minimal changes to the current look of a plan. A single file only is lodged, meaning discrepancies between digital data and paper files are non-existent. Weaknesses are that the specs would need to be comprehensive to cover all possibilities of data included on the plan. Data validation relies on linking dimension text to linework, and no jurisdictions have implemented a comparable model for strata plans. Case study three investigates providing digital data for boundary definition only and limits the digital file to information that describes the boundary definition adopted. As part of a pre-lodgement online validation process, the surveyor identifies the cadastral monuments that have been adopted, those that further validate the definition and any that have been re-referenced. This pre-validation process compares the digital data against registered plan data to compare alignment with current records. Where discrepancies exist, surveyors can override warnings to account for reference data errors or where discrepancies occur due to monument precedents. This process effectively creates a digital survey report to improve efficiency and consistency of plan examination, as well as reducing any potential typographical errors. Once the boundary definition is validated, the surveyor can export in their preferred format ready for drafting. The exported file will include annotations generated from the digital data to avoid typo errors and discrepancies. The drafted plan image is lodged with the validated digital data. However, only the digital data is examined and forms the legal point of truth. Simple title diagrams and plan views can be generated from the data, while the drafted plan image is mainly used by other surveyors. So this approach allows for simpler specs for data and can accommodate a large range of file formats. It also caters for monument-based cadaster, which is important for any digital approach moving forward. Already captured LandXML data can be utilized to save time in pre-work and plan preparation, and it will improve the quality of the digital data for industry moving forward. This also allows for consistent and efficient examination and requires minimal changes to the current drafting process. Some weaknesses include the increased efforts to document boundary definition prior to plan drafting. Discrepancies may exist between digital and plan data. There could be complexities in building the data validation tool, and this will be difficult to adopt for strata plans. So case study four is expanded land XML. Under this approach, the scope of land XML would be expanded with additional information for improved plan visualization. For example, a LAN XML file would contain details for the placement of text, simplifying the complexity of developing a rendering service. A more reliable and consistent rendering service is possible as it would not have to cater for complex text placement and conflict scenarios. The additional requirements could either be delivered through enhancements to existing software or through an online visualization enhancement service, as proposed in Victoria, as part of the plan enlargement process. In practice, this means that the annotations produced are linked to the object that they belong to, 
and also contains additional features for the position, shown as the small green text on the screen. It could also allow for generating tables such as RM tables, as well as exaggerating offsets and user-defined diagrams. This is not currently supported by the International Schema or New South Wales Recipe, but the LandXML standard does include elements that could be used for this purpose. Strength of this study is that we could leverage the existing investment in LandXML by the software vendors and some parts of industry. The greater user control improves the visualization of plans, simplifying the rendering service. There is also minimal changes required to the plan image. A single file being lodged also ensures that plan data and image are aligned. Weaknesses include added complexity of the format means there is likely to be a barrier to adoption. Significant investment is required into enhancing software or creating an online service. There is also an existing poor perception of LAN XML in the industry, and this may be complex to implement for strata plans. This brings me to digital strata plans case study. So what could digital strata plans look like? We know that the solution for strata plans may differ from survey plans due to the differences in how they're prepared. This study involves a file format surveyors are already comfortable with, such as DWG or DXF, that can be used to lodge geometry information required to define land, lot, and easement boundaries, potentially with a CSV type file that includes tabulated data like lot areas, unit entitlement, and addresses. The user could progress through an online strata plan preparation process. The lodgement process could incorporate dimensioning tools for thin lines, as well as extrusion and offset functions where users can link points back to physical structures. The user would be able to override geometry derived dimensions with those observed in the field, while validation checks would ensure that all required dimensions are in place prior to lodgement. Common boundary points could be used to link floor plan information to allow it to be overlaid with the location plan for improved visualization and quality assurance. Stratum statements could be directly linked with the corresponding parcel features within the plan. Enabling lodgement of tabulated data would allow pre-lodgement data validation tools to reduce examination time frames while reducing errors and requisitions on strata plans. So two options may then be available for finalizing lodgement of strata plans. Option one, the user exports file in their preferred format for final drafting of plan image with annotations pre-populated with user-defined dimensions. Option two, the plan visualizations such as title diagrams are generated from the digital data do not include dimension information. Surveyors through access to digital data can extract dimensions in order to re-establish strata lot boundaries. Other users only see a simplified view that might include boundary line work, lot areas, strata statements, and other notes. The strengths for this stream of work are that the specs for data are more simplistic and therefore a variety of file formats can be supported. This approach is tailored to strata lot boundary definition practices and will allow for consistent and efficient examination. With option two, the plan image could also be simplified for non-survey users. Weaknesses would be the additional effort to document dimensions prior to plan drafting, and there may be conflicting information between the data sets in option one. Also, the online plan preparation workspace may be complex to develop and must be easy to use to be effective. That ends the case study demonstrations and we really look forward to gathering your views on these. It's important to note that the digital plan solutions will be shaped by the feedback we receive from the profession. So please jump onto our digital plan survey and help us create the solutions that you want to see. As you can see, each of these studies currently have their strengths and weaknesses and require industry expertise in order to try and formulate tangible solutions moving forward. If you have the time, please contribute your views on a range of different criteria that from the review and from previous feedback that we've picked up, because we know these are beneficial for your organisations. These include timeframes, quality of plans, cost and lodgement experience. So the survey has been emailed out to the surveyors on our surveyor mailing list and will be distributed by ACS and ISNSW and will be open for at least two weeks. At a later stage, we'll send out a reminder with a closing date in case you don't have current capacity, but you may have a few uh, in a few weeks. 
Uh, thank you for attending today and please feel free, free to ask any questions now or you can email myself or Adrian at any time. Thank you very much, Daniel and Adrian. I have actually posted in the chat box the link. Most of you will have received the email from LRS during the week. Uh, but in case you didn't, there is the link to the survey. Um, so I encourage you to click on that link or to email the email address there if you've got any questions. The case studies are embedded within the survey. So you can actually download those case studies, have a look at them. Uh, and then go back and answer the survey. So look, it's estimated it'll take you about 15 minutes. Some of you might want to put some more thought into it, it might take you up to half an hour. But we, I know that Daniel said, if you've got time, we'd love for you to do it. But from ACS, we're saying we really want you to do it, okay? Um, we have put in a lot of energy to make sure that this is working with industry input. And so, um, unfortunately, Craig Turner's not on the call today. He's already got all his points. Um, and he's seen this presentation many times. So I was gonna get him to talk to you and encourage you all that you really need to do that survey, okay? So we don't wanna to get to the end of this process and have everybody say that industry wasn't asked what they thought, we didn't get an opportunity to input. So you might not like any of those cases, you might not like any of the scenarios that have been suggested to you today. So if that's the case, then again, you need to tell us. So we had planned that we would have actually been running a roadshow around the state to do this. We haven't been able to do that. Um, so hence the reason for this webinar. And we will be making this available to all of our members to make sure that they do get this part of the session, which we think is highly critical for the future of where we're going with digital plans. So um, uh, very, very important. I'm not asking that question, Ray. <laughs> Sorry, cheeky. I can tell it's five o'clock on Friday. Um, so look, I'm not seeing any realistic questions come through. So um, uh, I'm not gonna ask that one. I'll, I'll have to tell you what it was, Danny. He wants to know what you're wearing under the suit. Um, clearly Friday afternoon and time for a beer. So I'm not seeing any real questions come through. So that means that you've all got it. You understand where we're heading with this. You're gonna head online and do that survey and uh, we're gonna get those responses. So we will be pushing that out through our uh, usual emails, which I know that you all read every Tuesday, right? You look out for Surveyor's Scoop. If you're not getting it, do let us know. We've done some updates on the database recently. So for those of you who are on this uh, webinar today and you haven't tried AusSearch before, there was a lot of shout outs there for brokers. Remember, AusSearch is the only broker that gives all pro uh, profits, the whole dollar that we make. The rest of it goes to LRS in case you're wondering. Uh, the whole dollar goes back into the profession so that we can run these kinds of things for you and do a whole lot more in that space. So just encourage you um, to try AusSearch if you haven't already. And uh, if you're not a member of ACS and you're like, man, these guys are awesome. Look at these great webinars that they're running. Can I encourage you to get involved? And for all the ACS members, we are gonna sign out of this webinar now and we're gonna go to our online meeting for virtual drinks. So thank you all very much for joining us today. Thank you to Daniel, Adrian, everybody who is involved. Uh, I am going to stop the recording now.